Hey guys, this is Sean from uh, ABS, and I uh, wanted to thank you for watching this episode. Um, please, if you haven't yet, uh, hit the subscribe button, the like, and hit the bell as well. It helps, uh, help, helps us grow the channel, but also it helps me keep these two in line, which is also very important. The best part about Pebble is Carmel, just hanging around Carmel. Every time we're done, if we get done before like six, we just hop in the rental car, shoot to Carmel, dump the car, and just That's walk it. around What's for the, hours. The rental car I, I gotta figure that out with Richie. Last year I had a bomb Hyundai, it was so fast. Really? Cold start, straight to the floor. Oh. Think <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to blow that engine, it was so good. another episode of In the Driver's Seat with ABS. So we have our S back, Sean. Here I am. Uh, Father just, of two. Yeah. Father of two, can you believe it? That's awesome. Boy and a girl. Congrats. Yeah, uh, uh, much to Antonio's disappointment, I did not name him Enzo Ferrari, La Ferrari, Mondial, Ducati. No, not Mondial. <laughs> Pasta Jeez, really? pizza. <laughs> His name was Mondial. I was like, you don't want to talk to that. Yeah, so. Up for adoption. <laughs> it's so awful. <laughs> but we're back. And you've uh, brought the average height of the uh, uh, podcast, podcast back up. up. Oh, good. Very high. Yep. Yeah. And we thank you for Steve for sitting in while I was uh, doing daddy duties. So. I thought we were going to have a permanent replacement. He was, was kind of good. We'll have yeah, to try yeah, Sam out, I'll have too. To look like, him. Having him on there because you bullied him the whole time. I did not bully him. I'll have to look at my That's contract. That's an editing thing. A little bit. A little no, bit. we're friends, usually. <laughs> <laughs> so today, gentlemen, we're talking about the future of the market and what we think the future of the collector car market is. We're in a weird spot right now. Yeah. Everything's up. Everything is extremely high. But the more I talk to people, they say it's... Just a, a fad, and it's starting to come down. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm. I don't know. I mean, who are we to talk about this? But yeah, it's it's on. funny that we are. But we. I think we we do we spend enough time on bringing a trailer and uh, looking at auctions and participating and understanding what and just seeing what has happened over the past couple of years. I mean, it is crazy to see, especially like. I think I think you're right though. I, I have been reading a little bit of. Um, People saying that, especially with like the Porsches, mm -hmm. that we we've probably hit the peak. the peak of where it was, or we're, we're past that peak, if you will. I think Doug Demuro had something about that. This? Yeah, he said something about it too, where he he was saying a lot of people were coming back after six months when their cars didn't sell it, when they had a reserve, they didn't sell them, and then they tried to sell them privately, hmm. and then they would come back and say, hey, is is that are you still willing to take what my car didn't meet for. Mm -hmm. um, so you're seeing that people are having a hard time. They're being humble. Yeah, they're being humble. You're, they're, you're, they're seeing that, you know, they're not necessarily getting those crazy numbers that yeah. we may have seen a year, six months to a year into COVID when I think yeah. a lot of this happened. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. still think, I mean, you know, some of the specialty cars like Carrera GT and other stuff like that, and going for like over two million. Well, now, the Carrera GT to me was undervalued for a while. Oh, I mean, that was oh, yeah. I remember they couldn't swing it for a little bit. Yeah, but it was like it was sitting at 600, 650 for a few years. And I'm thinking to myself, like, this is yeah. a real deal car. And I remember all of a sudden yeah. it was two million. I remember going to the dealership and seeing those. They couldn't sell them. Yeah, yeah. People didn't get it. I don't yeah. think people understand and that. And I think now that you're seeing, and we talked about this the in the first episode. Go back and watch. Um, that a lot of the cars now, modern hypercars, mm -hmm. they 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 kind of have a similar feel. Yeah. You know, they, they that kind of raw like the, the rawness is, and people are kind of I think kind of going back to wanting that analog feel, and we we talked about this, but mm -hmm. I think that's really what a lot of the the numbers are are reflecting, and also the Carrera GT is from 2004, right, mm -hmm. 2000, oh, 2005. Yeah, five, yeah. So people who, you know, were 20 when this car came out can now afford it, Yeah. and, or, you know, they've been successful, and yeah. people who, who grew up with these cars are now able to buy them, and I think you're seeing yeah. that, you saw that happen with, you yeah. know, the, the cars from the 60s, the 70s, yeah. when those generations grew up, and now we're seeing it with the cars 
you yeah, know. definitely. And you know, all these, you know, we just had that young timer event. We got a young timer exhibition in the museum coming up. A lot of those cars are way up. And, oh yeah. You know, the yeah, yeah the heavy hitters. Okay, the uh, the Mercedes Evo two. It's a, it's a homologation car. Okay, it's going to be up. But things like we've got in the in the show a Saab nine hundred turbo mm -hmm. in that Monte Carlo yellow, beautiful yep. one year. It's an SE model. It's a great car. Those cars have just you know no one wanted them regardless of the color. And now it's like oh I've got I've got People some like dough. I, you know I, I can do an extra car. Well, you see that in art too. Like there'll be a, you know an artist in their lifetime and they make these whatever kind of paintings and mm. people don't like them and then once they've passed on then people are like, oh these are so incredibly yeah. valuable yeah i think you can relate be related to cars as yeah. well yeah i think what's interesting about you know now it's august 22 covid comes around the world shuts down no one's going out no one's spending money and the market hadn't really gone crazy yet so it was that crazy demand of like oh i can you know one of the safe things to do yeah. without being in a crowd is go out and drive a car yep. sure. and i don't have a car so you've got all these guys in new york all these guys who are just working so from home too. Yeah, exactly yeah. yeah and it's like oh i'm gonna buy a car and then there's this crazy demand now people are back in the office now it, now there's too much demand but now the gas prices are up mm -hmm. and the housing market's up so I'm starting to wonder if people are starting to back down and yeah. say, well, you know, do I really need that car? Do I, you know, do I have to spend that money? And so to that, you know, people want when they, when we're going on these drives, they want that manual transmission. They want that feel of the rawness. That was another know? thing I think we wanted to talk about today is, you know, 10 years ago, you saw the decline in the manual transmission. Yeah. Then there was this big revival. There's a big uproar. Oh, where's yeah, the, manual? the manual? We got to save yeah. the manual. Hashtag save the manual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use the hashtag. That might help. Uh, <laughs> No, um, but now there's more companies still keeping the manual around. Honda's doing a manual. BMW hasn't given it up yet. Porsche, they obviously. Up. They just brought the manual back for the Supra. So the GR Supra has a manual. Mm -hmm. The GR Yaris in Europe, and then the. Wasn't there a company that GR was going to right? Wasn't there a company that was going to introduce some sort of manual transmission with an EV? Who um, was that? Yeah, I think that was so bizarre. There are a couple uh, electric companies out there that'll that'll offer a manual transmission for an electric that's car. weird sam's gonna have to put up a graphic again because i have no idea how that works yes yeah. yeah yeah <laughs> without sam we wouldn't really have this well the, and okay. you you see that too because i remember i was talking with one of our motorsport members who bought a ferrari 360 new and the dealership really pushed them to get the, the F1, F1 transmission mm -hmm. because yeah, because it was like fifteen dollar, fifteen thousand dollar option. Well, you know, this is the the best of the best. This is what we're using in our formula cars. This is um, so much faster than a manual transmission. But now, you know, go and bring a trailer. See an F1 transmission versus yeah, a three yeah, it's so versus a six speed. It's off. like the 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 values are like fifty thousand dollars more for it. Yeah. Oh, it's it the some manual of those transmission. clutch transmissions are really good. Like the Scuderia, great transmission sure. once you're moving. You just drove an E60 M5 that was oh. new, new to the collections. That yes, the SMG Silverstone, box, the best color. Which received a lot of flack when it came out. It did. But, but if you drive uh, an SMG BMW the right way, where if you're driving slowly and you, you know, you're accelerating, and then you take your foot off the gas like you would with a manual, then shift. It's not as bad. Full throttle, you can you it, know, shift. It's quick at full throttle, but it's almost like at half at half speed, you know, if you don't have, there's that setting it's by the, the gear lever. Motion that you can well, it's almost like you can almost feel like two hands picking up the gear and like putting mm -hmm. it in the next set of gears. Yeah. It's like that's slow. But you turn you turn the, uh, the setting all the way up. And, and, if, and once you're moving like above like four and a half thousand revs, it'll pluck a gear pretty yeah. quick. And that, that car, I mean, I think that's a that's a car, a clean example of one of those in, you know, 20, 30 years from mm. now, whatever, will probably be worth a decent amount of money. With, a, sure. with a stick, without a stick. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter. And V10 uh, in a family car. I yeah. Mean, car. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. But, you know, I think the biggest thing, going back to what we were saying, the six speed versus the, mm -hmm. let's say the paddle transmission, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. Um, a lot of the, the F1 transmissions, you can't, you can't, you don't really experience how good they are unless you're mm -hmm. really putting yeah. the car through its paces. That's the thing. And a lot of these cars, you can't, on our roads, especially here, mm -hmm. you really can't put them through your, yeah. the paces. So yeah. it's it's more enjoyable, I think, for our environment here to drive a manual. Drive a manual oh, in, in, if you're really going after the driving experience. The F1 transmissions are great, but 
you know, we can't really go it's more a, than 35, 40 miles an yeah, hour. That, so that M5 <laughs> is a continent crusher. Yeah. Like I can only imagine sitting in like fourth gear at 120, and well, you can pee in any gear you want, and it's yeah. just it's just so efficient. But the cannonball. Thing, the what? Cannonball car? We'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> um, we'll keep it on the DL. We'll just show up at the Portofino yeah. one day. Like, um, but that car, it's like, it's all about strength. Like, that's a different type of transmission, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's really not about around town efficiency yeah. or anything. I mean, it really doesn't feel that's, at home. That is a Shifting hybrid. below, yeah. I, mm, uh. Well, the thing is, I, I, I That could be the one for a cannonball. That, well, well, maybe not because of how much gas it drinks. No, you, gotta, you gotta do a fuel, put a fuel cell. cell. You gotta do a fuel cell with any of those cars. I remember uh, my best friend's dad had one uh, yeah. growing up when we were in middle school, and yeah. he used to pick us up kind of you know early fall and late spring of the school year. Yeah. And I remember one day uh, he picked us up late from track practice or whatever, and he like. You ran track. Yeah, dude. Are and you I, sure? And then I packed on the pounds. There you go. Okay. And then so uh, <laughs> we get. We I thought get, you were like a shot put guy. No, <laughs> not really. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> jackass. <laughs> so, so uh, we get we get in the M5. Yeah. And, and it was kind of late, and he's like, "Do you guys want to make it home fast?" And we're like, "Yeah, yeah." So we get in, and he just he like he presses the M button on the steering wheel. Like I remember when Jeremy Clarkson did the review for Top yeah. He was like, "Press the M button, the yep. car comes alive." Push this, and everything oh. changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He pressed the M button and he like pressed the, the, the gear um, like meter up yeah, all yeah. the way and we just absolutely hauled it on the way home. And we yeah. got home. It's like a you know twenty five minute ride. Yeah. Average MPG eight. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. car was being nice. Nice fuel, but the sound and like, oh. you know, I'm sitting in the back and you got the exhaust right back yeah. there. That experience is like unmatched. And yeah, that's yeah. why, you know, you get to the age now where you want to buy that car because oh, of that and experience. And that car is oh, yeah. like with an SMG and 50,000 miles on bring a trailer is like $22,000. Well, interesting enough. 22 not, grand. I remember like, you know, how old am I? I'm 25. So, mm -hmm. you know, eight, nine years ago when I'm looking for my first car, I remember seeing those for sale for like 10 grand, 12 grand. And I was like, oh my God, I want this so bad. And I started reading about it. And, yeah. it. and there was literally this one forum posting. It's like, if you have the money to buy this car, but just enough money to buy this car, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Servicing. You take it for service twice it's and you like, already oh, paid yeah. total that. Yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, it's cheap, but you don't realize that it has service costs of a supercar. Yeah. So, yeah. but you know, if you have the money now and you're spending, you know, 25 and you got to put an extra 10 or 15 into it. So yeah. it's perfect. I think that car's worth it. And the, and the crazy elephant in the room about that car is you've got a V10, uh, big, long, comfortable saloon that'll do 200 miles an hour. And we will never, I can almost, I would bet never my life saving that we'll never have a car like that again. Yeah. Well, for that's so what they're reasons. saying. Like the GT2 RS, they're, yeah. they're saying that. Porsche may never make another GT2 RS that just can't yeah. with the emissions and yeah, it's everything just, like that's that. That's why we've seen like spy shots of like the 992 GT2 on like Nurburgring or whatever. Oh, well, that's the GT3, isn't is it? it? Well, the GT3 RS is GT3 getting RS? announced on the 17th of August. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, think, I'm pretty I sure think, that's I the think one. The GT2 has been spotted as well. Has it? I don't know. Yeah, he'll find a way. You, uh, you know anything about the new GT3 RS? Or? GT3 RS? Yeah, yeah. Anything uh, you want to uh, talk about, Sean? I believe I, I heard a phone call, like overheard a phone call. <laughs> no. And Tony was like up to the joint. We like oh. the 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 Audrey likes Porsches. What can we, we say? Do. <laughs> a little tangent there, but to bring it back, you're talking about the E60 M5. Mm -hmm. Even a rarer car with that engine was the M6 of that generation. Mm -hmm. We only made 701, mm -hmm. the manual transmission. Mm -hmm. That's another car that's kind of like uh, something that they'll never make. Yeah, that's a again, yeah. crazy engine in it. Yeah. I mean, well, the BMW, they what's what's nice is they they listen to their audience and they they like. If, I remember when I had my M2, I was. With that. <laughs> well, I, they did. That was yeah. a Chinese. That, that, that was for the Chinese market. They did a survey in China. Yeah, so said, kidney grills now. Well, they want That's bigger grills. But I remember, you know, when I was getting my M2, I was all over Bimmer Post and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and um, you know, they really everyone was like worried about the M5 not having a manual transmission because it was going to be an all-wheel drive car oh, now. In the F10. And then they made the 
then they made it where you could select all wheel or four wheel or all wheel drive versus rear wheel drive. Isn't that a thing? Yeah, the now? new F90 has a switch. You yeah, can you go can full switch rear or or full, full all wheel. which and still have a manual transmission, right? Is F90 that, does not. F90 does F10, not. The F10 did. The, yeah, this was around the time I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. the F10 was coming out. Yeah, but, the F10 did. Um, yeah, I just, I think that's great. I was looking at those. You remember we were in the office yeah. a couple years ago and I'm like, dude, should I sell the 135 for an F10? There's, there was one on Facebook for like 28.5 yeah. or like 75,000 miles. I remember that, you were seriously. The maintenance on those is, people don't realize they're almost as bad and perhaps I would almost say they're worse. I'm gonna ask, I'm going to my mechanic Turbo Woodward tomorrow. I'm gonna ask him about it because those hot turbos right in the middle the of the V, v they yeah. leak and then they get into the cylinders, it's bad. It's not good. The M5, the E60s, if you do the rod bearings, you're fine. Yeah. And it's like, okay, yo, we'll have to that, deal with it. It's like, dude, you're, buy, you're buying an exotic car and you're complaining about spending five grand on rod bearings. It's like, it's not that big of a deal. Oh, and just it, do it. And again, you know, we, just what we said before, you buy the car for 20 and you put, you know, an extra 10 into mm -hmm. it. Okay, you're in it for 30 and you have a 200 mile an hour four door family car. God, I love that car. With a V10. Oh. My dad had an E60 N54 5 Series, and it yeah. was like so, so good. So did my dad, yeah. It was so good, dude. It was, it was great. Damn, I'm the only one. My dad didn't have one. Your dad has yeah, pretty sick golf, yeah, though. He's got Ducatis, he's, though. He's got Ducatis. Like, yeah, my dad didn't be able to go to Ducatis. Dude, my dad <laughs> ABR tuned his golf. It's not like yeah, it's <laughs> nothing. Your dad's got a standard <laughs> golf. Like, yeah, yeah, that thing is so baller. I can just see him moving around like, yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's I'm making the shift. Not fast the car. You know what to do. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So you've had some collector cars over the years. Yeah. Which cars, cars that will probably go up in value as we get older. Yeah, I probably sold them too early. The M2. I had the M, well, yeah, the first. The Datsun. You had a 911. I had a 911 too, yeah. Dude, so the, had all the great stuff. I, oh, my yeah. first, like, collection, or not, I was a uh, 1971 Datsun 240Z. Yep. Um, that I saw, there was a place in New Jersey that I would go just to look. Morristown? No, it was by Morristown, though. <laughs> um, and Horrible area. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, it was uh, it was called Rob Francis Sports Cars, and you know they had Porsches, they had um, vintage cars essentially for sale, and they had a, Z, a 240Z there. And I remember my dad always talked about how he loved that car growing up. It was his favorite car, and they had one in the showroom. They are good looking. And um, I went back like six months later, and it was still there. And uh, I was talking to the guy. He's like, "Yeah, we're, we just can't sell it." This this was like 2000, probably like 2010, if not earlier. Yeah, he could have bought an E30 M3 for like 25 grand. Yeah, and I <laughs> test no, drove. I test drove an E30 there. Really? At the same place, but I was like, uh, for an E30? I would say yeah. At the I think they were that one they were selling was immaculate, and it was like 60. Yeah, and yeah, this yeah. was like probably 2015. Yeah, yeah. And. Um, so yeah, I, I came back six months later and he was like, yeah, the guy's just trying to get rid of it. We'll sell it for like whatever. I think I, we paid like seven grand for it. Wow. A 240Z well, in immaculate condition. Z now in good condition? <sighs> uh, early series one, that early, you're not touching for, I mean, go and bring a trailer. I sold it for more than, I think I tripled my money on that car. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, but the driving I, experience of those, I drove one recently, they're so fun. They are fun, and they're they sound amazing. They were qu they were quicker than 911s at the time. Yeah, they were so they're so light. They're, they're so, so light, and they're, they shoved that engine way back. So I love that car. I always love the look of the car. You know, it's similar <clears throat> to a Ferrari Daytona. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, the long front hood, short rear. Um, again, the one we had was a super early one, so it had a lot of unique things to it. Um, and it was yellow. It was great color. I can't remember the name of the color, but I had that until. I sold that right before I came here, so like 2019-ish, 2018 I sold it. That was about when they were, yeah, they were on the Yeah, to. yeah, and I had it, and the reason why I sold that was because I just wasn't driving it. It was not really a car that um, you could really go on long, it was more like a short burst kind of car, yeah. and it was Sun fun. Sunday cruiser. Yeah, Sunday cruiser, and I, you know, just got married. I had River, my daughter, and um, I just wasn't driving it, and I felt bad that I wasn't driving yeah. it. Yeah. And I wanted someone to be able to experience it. It was such a great example of a car. He's so mature. He's very mature. I would have been, what he wants no, to be. I'm keeping it. <laughs> yeah, what I want to be. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I, I love this car so much, but it really deserves to be with someone who's going to use it. So I sold it. Um, and at the same, and about at the same time, I, I 
the same place, Rob Francis sport car, Sports Cars, uh, there was a 911 Targa, an 80, 1980 911 Targa, and um, it was pretty rough, you know, mm -hmm. interior ripped, his seats were ripped, you know, wasn't great, but. I like he this was guy, like, Rob he was, Francis. He's got some, <laughs> the ripped seats. He was, he was like, he was, the car was like, they were like giving the car I away. Love it, yeah. So I, it was like, I don't know, I think it was like $17,000 or something, I financed it. Cause oh I was, my God. you know, I just had to have it. Yeah, and, dude. Um, when was this? What year was this? This was probably, I was probably like your age, 25. Damn, diaper days. <laughs> <laughs> you still so this was too? probably like, yeah, it's like 2015. Oh, yeah. those, and, those uh, G-body Targas those G -body are so targa. fun yeah, I mean, to you, drive. They still, you still get one for 50, maybe less. Yeah, yeah. So I, and the, the funny thing is that car, I loved it. And, you know, I had the original window sticker. It was like 90 grand in 1980, wow. which is crazy. That's a lot and, of money. Yeah, and um, I couldn't, you know, that, that car was, like we were talking about servicing of cars. Mm -hmm. I could not afford to service that car at the time. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. You know, it was stupid. I just love cars. I always wanted to be able to have a car that I could enjoy. And mm -hmm. I had the Z, we had the Z at the time, but you know, this was too good to pass up, so. Um, I, we had that for a few years and we just always seemed like it was getting serviced and every time I would get that car serviced, it would be like, you know, fifteen hundred, two thousand, three thousand dollars $3,000. Yeah. Um, and you know, this was right when the Porsches were starting to, the G bodies were starting yeah. to mm -hmm. explode as Such well. So I car. sold it, mm -hmm. oh. um, didn't lose money on it, made money. I did a few things to it. I got the Fuchs, you know, refinished. I, um, What's the proper the pronunciation of that? Fuchs. 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 Don't say that. It's not. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, it, you read it on paper. It seems. You know, I did a lot of aesthetic things to it. Made yeah, it look yeah. good. Fix some of the seating. But you know, it was it was more of like it was just cool. I, there's no reason why a 25 year old should be driving a G body Porsche. But, yeah, but that's uh, awesome. It was fun. That's to a experience. great story. And uh, yeah, it was cool. And then that's when I. I, in 2016, I ordered the M2 when it took like a year. I was like seventh on the allocation list of the wow. dealership I was at. Holy I refused crap. to pay over sticker. So, um, and what it took about a spec? year. It was a mineral gray. That, was, there was like was three the options. Yeah, mineral gray, Apple CarPlay, uh, six speed manual transmission. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were the specs. Uh, yeah. yeah, um, that's and such a good car to drive too. Oh, so yeah. yeah, that was so a great car. Fun. I love that car. That was that was the first car I bought new. I loved that car so much. Mm -hmm. um, and I had that. I put about twenty thousand miles on that car before I sold. I traded it in for a Tesla just because of family and commute and everything. Um, but I I never never that car was in sport or sport plus every time I was yeah. driving. It mm -hmm. was, I drove the living bananas out of that car. How many sets of rear tires did you go through? I really didn't. I mean, uh, you just said he's mature. Then you're asking about rear tires. Yeah, yeah. but like I, I'm immature. So like I already forgot about what I said five minutes ago. I go through almost and two And he sets said M, M2. But that was also so, my daily driving car. That was what I yeah, drove yeah. You everywhere. also did a donut in front of a cop once. So you, you have- Why no, are you incriminating me like this? Well, it wasn't. So, it wasn't. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that was. It was a Paul Blart like mall cop. Yeah, yeah, right, right. That was that was good. That was a great car. I loved that car, and yeah. that was really hard. Yeah, and it just looked so good. It was you know the three series, um, uh, that like the hips on the end. Every the hips. time, and this every... was this was right when it came out. I had the second year, so 2016 was the first year. 2017, yeah. was the second year when CarPlay came. That yeah. was Didn't like they the do... only differentiating. When did they do, didn't they do a facelift on the original They did M2? a CS, uh, which No, no, because it's M2, then it was M2 Comp. Yeah, And the then comp, it was sorry. only M2 Comp. Mm -hmm. And then it was, now it's M2 Comp and M2 CS, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. They did a facelift on the base. But I think they did a facelift, like they changed the grill and like bit. the taillights a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. The LCI, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I love that car. That Every time you come in my car, you're like, oh, I missed my M2. It's like, yeah, wait, but you're, I would take a 1 Series over. Would you really? Well, yeah, uh, 100%. A, a 1M. Well, 1M's, 1M's are, different. 1M's really never though. lost value. Yeah. They, 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 that was they a made, true collector One of the car. best made, BMWs ever. They only made... 5,000. Five. They made 5,000. They made five times as many as they... Wanted to. They were planning on making fifteen hundred, and there was so much demand. They yeah, sold you can't get them. Yeah. Well, they're I mean, incredible cars. Too, now now it's out. like you know you can find a flood damaged one still for MSRP yeah. price, which is crazy. Um, ben Chester, 
Yeah, Sean, we've got some news to share with you. Uh-oh. Ben Ben Chester has some news. You, Did you buy a car? Well, you bought a car. Wait, wait. I, <laughs> you you you've had some cars. Yeah, some, yeah. I've had a couple some collector things, cars. A couple Passats. So I had is a manual Passat four motion. That was slammed. one of four hundred. I saw the was I saw the BMW is still outside, so that's never getting sold. Right? I will never sell. Yeah, my you will never sell your one thirty. Dude, I've had that. I've had my BMW now for eight years. I've gone cross country in it six times. Awesome Track car. days, autocrosses. Yeah, you can't sell that. You know, backseat stuff. Great car. I then I took and, the back seats out, so it's like. Can I try and guess what you bought? Yeah, you can guess what I bought. You gotta give me. Uh, yeah, wait, 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 yo, can I guess what I bought? Well, you're gonna need to. You gotta give me like. Well, get what parameter do you want? Na, 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 na. You gotta write it on the board and then show me. Oh, yeah, Are we, like, have we talked about this car? I'm sure we have at some point. I have no idea. Oh, come on. Think, <laughs> think about. We've what... been talking a lot about BMWs today. Is it a BMW? No, it's not. Think a BMW. about what he has had in the past. Yeah. Volkswagen. Volkswagens. Yeah. Volkswagen Group. You, you bought an Audi. I didn't buy an Audi, Let, and the, I didn't buy Skoda. The Sam. previous one was <laughs> like a like a mix between like coffee and shit brown. I don't know. If, I don't, I don't know, know if he was, was here for that. I wasn't here oh, for he that. Oh, was, no, he was here for that. No, you were here. He, he was 2020, summer of 2020. Oh, you bought a Porsche? I might have. <laughs> what were we buying? It was a 1980 G body that he. Oh, did you, did you buy a 928? Did you buy a 928? If my parents hear this before I tell them, they're gonna be did you buy a 928? Who cares? I did not buy a 928. Should I tell you, or do you want to just see a picture of it? Yeah, I want to see a picture. No way. That's the, is that the Audrain car? No, let me show you. I gotta show how, you. How beautiful is that? That's, guards red? An absolute steel. Oh, it's a turbo. Yeah. 951. Where'd you find it? Uh, Facebook. So me and Jarrett. Wait, who, I want the 904. That's 904, yeah. I love that picture. <laughs> yeah, just, Ben bought yeah. a 904. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bought a 904. Wow. Uh, How'd you find that? So, dude, I'm, I, my friend just bought an E30, my friend Larson. Um, we literally just drove across country in an E30. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, from uh, Nebraska. Nebraska. And we'll tell them what you bought. Well, I bought a Porsche 951. I bought a 944 Turbo. Um, it's unbelievable. It's an unbelievable car. I haven't even gotten it yet. I'm picking it up Saturday. How many okay. miles? I'll get into it. So, my, my friend, we just drive this E30 across country and it's like got mm-hmm. X. It was, he bought it for about, you know, 951 cost, a little less. And I'm thinking, if I spend that money, I think I want a 951. And I walk into Park Place one day, and there's Jarrett, who... Yeah. Um, He's uh, awesome. He works for Mike Newt's yeah. at High Tech. He works on a lot of our cars. Yeah, and he yeah. had the Golf 951 that was in the Concorde. Yep. So I see him, I'm like, Jarrett, I got an itch. I got a bad itch. I think I want a 951. He's like, dude, you got to do it. And he's like, I got good news, too. I'm opening my own Porsche shop. So I don't know if you knew that, but no, he's actually yeah. leaving High Tech um, tomorrow. It was his last day. And he's like, dude, I can do all your work. I can do all this. I'm like, oh, now I have someone I can trust with the car. Because yeah. like, his is like meth injected, custom intercooler. That car is really cool. He's got like 400 wheel, dude. Yeah. The color is like, the color scheme is so So awesome. I'm trying to make this short, but there's a lot of details. So he sends me this listing. I'm like, I got to reach out to the guy. Talk to the guy on the phone. And he ends up talking me up about the car. And he's like, oh, man, like, I got a guy coming tomorrow with a trailer. He's picking it up. And I'm like, god damn it. Like, yeah. I, was, I, I was like, this car is mine. I was too slow. Text him the next day, did it sell? He's like, no, the guy no call, no show. So I end up going up there with Jarrett, we look at the car, it's quick, it's chipped, like turbo control arms, 911 turbo control arms, Mm -hmm. adjustable conies, which is like super rare. Yeah. Bunch of like weird stuff. And uh, we get in the car and and Jarrett's like, dude, if you don't buy this, I have nine grand in my pocket. He's like, I'm buying this car if you don't. So I bought it. That's and, awesome. And uh, I'm literally sending it right to Jared, doing some TLC stuff. It'll be good to go. That's awesome. It's unbelievable. And, and you, you know, said your parents don't know yet? My, no. <laughs> no, no, they do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can leave it, you can leave it at my house. No, you, no, no. I won't drive it. Oh, yeah. That's, that's crazy. I'll charge that's you for super it, cool. Though. Where Dude, was it? Was it a Rhode Island car? Connecticut. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's like an hour and a half away. So. Well, I think this kind of brings everything full circle because, yeah. like, the 944, when it came out, people were like, eh. Yeah. They didn't really like yeah, them that crazy. much. Yeah, they're crazy. And now, you know, they're going up. Guys who didn't they look great, they're who great, didn't grow up with them, like them, and yeah. they're appreciated. And they're they're in that bracket where it's, you know, I wouldn't call it a cheap car, but it's like it's the same thing with your 911. There are service costs. You have to do it right. You have to keep up with your maintenance. Yeah. But it's like it's like to, everything else. It's attainable. It's so obtainable. And yeah. you know, for a lot of them, it's like 
they are unobtainium. Yeah. This one has. 911 is now unobtainium. This one has 200,000 miles on it. Yeah. Six years ago, the guy bought it, and right before he bought it, the engine was pulled, everything resealed, new clutch, new timing belt, new water pump. He spent like six, eight grand on it, and then sold it to this guy, and the guy basically didn't drive it. So if you know 944s, you know if it sits, you got to do the timing belt. Yeah. So you send it, I sent it in to do the timing belt. I'm not going to say what I paid, but all I'll say is after doing the timing belt, it's still, I would say, under market. That's fabulous. So I'm very excited. It's fast. When are you getting it? Uh, well, I'm picking it up Saturday with Ben Teradash. Oh, awesome. Um, I can't wait to see it. That's Ben Teradash. We had him on the show. We say how much he helps, and he's like, yeah, I'll help you trail at home. Yeah, so he's taking yeah. the time out of his day to help me. That's awesome. So that's great. So very excited. Going Good right to you. Jared's. Jared's opening a shop next week. I'm his first customer. I'm like, you gotta give him that signed dollar bill. <laughs> I got a dollar bill on my desk. That, that's got his name on it. So, so that's my new Sean. I figured I'd surprise that's you. That's fabulous. I can't wait to yeah, see it. Yeah, isn't that good cool? For you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was funny. I was, uh, I was. I it's was good at, redemption from the last 944 you yeah, had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was funny. I was at the museum the other day. I was walking out to get a coffee, and uh, Nick was getting in the Emory 356, mm -hmm. and he's just backing out, and. I stopped him for just a second. I said, Nick, I, 10 seconds. I got to show you my new red car. He's in a red car. So he's like, ooh, ooh, let me see, let me see. And I show him a picture. And he's like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, this is so cool. Like, I looked at, I looked, at, we, yeah. I and Rick Boyer, one of our volunteers, went and looked at one. Yeah, because he has an S2. Rick's yeah, had yeah. an S2 that he's yeah. had for years. It's that car's Guards red, same wheels. Mint. Me and Rick had a moment today. Like, we hugged it out. Like, <laughs> he's in the museum today. We got, like, the same car now. So Nick looks at me. He's like, he's like, what'd you spend, 60 grand? And I was kind of like, no, Nick, I spent <laughs> and he was like flabbergasted. He thought I like literally had a heist. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's I kind of awesome. did. That's the car that's gonna, you're going to have. Yeah, I have yeah, a feeling yeah. you're going to have that one for a little while. I'm going to have it for a while. Yeah. Well, I don't do, I don't keep do the it, drive I, it, enjoy it. I don't do the flipping thing. I'm yeah. not yeah. about making a quick buck. You don't take you don't take the stuff with you when you're gone. No. You might as well enjoy it while it's here. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I know? know. And I and it's like a lot of people it's like I've been in the museum a lot. Like I feel like, you know, I've spent a lot of time in the museum floor. You hear a lot of stories. The amount of people who come in and say, oh, I had this great car and sold it, and it's like the biggest regret of my life. Like, I yeah. can't, I've heard that yeah, hundreds I, of times. I, oh, I know. Me too. I'm, I'm lucky enough to have. Sean's like my eight, 1980 G body 911. <laughs> no, that one I was fine. Yeah, but it's like. Z, the Z is more of a. Yeah, yeah. that's tough. That's tough. But that it's like, like my first class, sometimes like, you have to. You're starting a family. Yeah, like yeah. People have all these stories, but it's like I'm, I'm blessed and thankful enough to have like space in my house, yeah. whether like I have a spare garage space or space outside yeah, take if it comes down it. to it i'm sure like you know with the business we're in like i'm sure like i could talk to our, our boss uncle ben and say ben i need a parking spot behind park place <laughs> and i'm sure we could work something out but like i don't have that problem right now. yeah yeah you know yeah enjoy it so that's cool and you've got your panigale i do have the panigale and you're I, not even driving it on the road anymore, which is probably well, a good decision. Uh, I'm try. curious to see. Maybe our viewers in the comments can comment on a car that they've sold. Yeah, and yeah. They yeah. may have regretted. But yeah. I'm interested if to hear you, about it. If you're thinking about selling the car because you don't have the space, Park Place is <laughs> hit up a viable ben, option. Hit up Ben Chester. Yep. Ben, money bags, Chester. <laughs> we'll, we'll get you Ready to Park to Place. Blow it all. We'll, we'll, make a, we'll make a space for you at Park Place. Yeah, if you gotta no, sell exactly. Something. You know, that's that's part of that's what's great about that business is yeah. you know people may not have a garage space and yeah. we can take we care do. of them in that in that realm. And they all say they're heated, controlled. That's what's interesting and, about bikes is you don't have that problem. You can put it in your closet. Uh, to an extent. I mean, something like, I mean, I mean, if you had a big bag or Harley Davidson, yeah. that's a, <laughs> Never. a big body Harley. Um, um, yeah, big body. <laughs> you Harley. ain't driving a big body. You ain't driving a big body Harley. <laughs> you ain't even. F Get it down. <laughs> if you ain't driving a big body Buick, you ain't f gonna die. <laughs> um, it's like it's what we do all day, actually. But it's like <laughs> uh, you know, you have like a, a Ducati or something, or like an Aprilia or Envy Augusta. It's manageable. It's manageable, but it's you like you can put it right behind yeah. you. Look, it's right here. Look, it's in like, the living like room. This Vincent. My, I gotta wax the bike. Bring it in the living Dude, room. Dude, I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna imitate how they did that that thing in that. Careful. Don't knock it over. 49. No. Oh my God. Should I do it? Jesus Christ. Is it Antonio? working? <laughs> I want to ride this thing so badly. Just get off, yeah. or you won't be able to ride anything. It is a beautiful bike. Yeah. It's my favorite bike. Have you ridden it? No, but this is my favorite bike. That's a great bike. I want to do a thing where we ride with the, like, put Donald in the sidecar of the SS80. <laughs> That would be fun. Would you ride the Bruff with the hand shift and the oilers and everything? Oh, That's yeah. a lot to do. 
A lot of people get nervous because it's like a full time. I mean, I would want to like ride it in like a parking lot or like something it's first not, before like doesn't count. taking it out on the road to like learn what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> are we done? <laughs> <laughs> are we done? I don't think you can handle that bike, dude. What, that? I don't know. No, the bruff. Well, I would need practice with the bruff before like yeah. I got on well, it. Yeah. This is from the. This is from that. The, that yeah, would. This be, is more of a modern. That would be. But. And this also w w was so great about this is that this was like the first bike, I think one of the first ones to do twin drums. Oh yeah. Yeah. And this actually front like, and rear. Yeah. This actually stopped decently well, and the suspension on it was like super advanced. Yeah. So like this. This was like the first. Yeah. Super. This was like the, like first, the first super, super bike. bike. Yeah. And yeah. Vincent made everything from the motor up. Bruff was yeah. kind of a. Mix of everything. Franken bike, you know, mm -hmm. it had the matchless or the Jap engine. Mm -hmm. I love this stamp where it's like made in England, Vincent. Yeah, I love this. There bike. was one of these, kind of back to our, you know, back to the market. When we had our motorcycle show, there was a Vincent in the antique shop. What is this yeah. one? Black. No, 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 no. It was a Rudge. No, no, no. That no, was, there's a Vincent. It was a Vincent. It was a Vincent. It wasn't the one, a black the one down a, when you get off yeah. the Newport Bridge. It wasn't yeah. a black shadow. Oh, it, it was, was a, a black knight or something. No, yeah. the knight was. Uh, Something it, was, it wasn't a night because the night is the. We we'll need to get Richard Hunter in on this. I'm yeah. embarrassingly bad at bikes. The black shadow, the, you know, the the motor, the case is black. Yeah, that's the biggest. And tell. it was in the antique shop, like right in the window. And Richard Hunter comes in like all frothy, like there's a Vin I gotta go right now. I gotta go right now, thinking like he's gonna get a deal on it. They wanted like twice the market for yeah. it. Yeah. And it's like every everybody's into it now. Everybody's trying to make a buck off. Yeah, they're cars. six figure bikes. People weren't doing this with cars or or motorcycles like 50 years ago. It was like no one. It wasn't a common oh. thing. There was even so much before good bring a stuff. even in like 2005, it, this bring was a trailer a was literally like the root cause of all of this. Yeah, yeah. And we play the biggest part in it. We we are big bring a trailer fans. <laughs> bring a trailer is great. I oh, think it's it's addictive. The, you know the community and it's really now that you, you see La Ferraris being sold on at like five million dollars. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. awesome. It's and, great. And uh, I think it, you know I don't think you're ever going to see the the big Gooding and RM. Those guys aren't ever going to disappear, but. It's cool to see that mega cars, whether it's a Carrera GT, La Ferrari, even pre-wars are being sold on it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's and Doug DeMuro's Cars and Bids gets great cars too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's uh it's I wanted that 190E, remember that? Like last Oh yeah, Antonio says to me, he's like, dude, there's a 190E on there, should I buy it? I'm like, why do you want well, one? I, because I wanted to like make it into something crazy. I wanted to like low That'd to the cool. ground, like a, like that engine. one of Young Timers that you yeah, I wanted to do like. Kinda. Then I was like, I don't. I would rather spend the money on motorcycles. Those are great cars, but they're very Mercedes-y. Yeah. Like yeah. what the Evo twos? No, just the the cause like the oh, Evo the two the, point yeah, the yeah. threes. Yeah. They're very just solid. Yeah. You know, they're very just down. I want to be scared. That's not a car you're gonna be scared in. I know. This nine five one though. Wait till you drive it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, no, I'm it's, excited. It's brutally fast for what it is. Well, I think I think that's a, a good place to end. Maybe we can throw in some, some footage. I have no footage of it, I have pictures. It, it's, well, it's funny thinking about like that generation of stuff, like that's all nostalgic and whatnot, but it's, it's weird to see where we're going with this whole subscription-based stuff with the heated seats from BMW, things like that. Yeah, they're um, testing that in the UK right now. It just doesn't seem like I, I just, I'm curious to see where the collector market is going. It's like, yeah, they're building. Why would they market. charge a subscription? What's the rationale? Uh, I've seen. Oh, I know. Obviously yeah, duh. Money. No, yeah. But what's the, like, brilliant? Absolutely brilliant. What's the? Uh, I don't understand it. I do not understand it at all. I haven't, I haven't read up on it too much. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not. It's not something I'm like excited to learn well, it's about. Well, it's kind of like, yeah, it's like you're reading it, so why am I reading this? I it makes me this. really sad about BMW. Like, since the Chris Bangle generation, shout yeah. out Chris Bangle, it's my guy. <laughs> um, since that era kind of died off and everything's turbocharged. It's different. And, you know, everything's built by computers. Less soul. It's interesting because companies are building collector cars. Like, oh, we're going to build this collector car, and then we'll build everything else. It'll be interesting to see how that goes because it's yeah. not just cars that they built. Like, you know, Evo 2s were homologation cars, for example. It's like, you knew yeah, that I mean, would be a great these, car. These cars, they just threw money at and they didn't care. It's like, all about profits today. That's yeah. what I'm really, really concerned about. Well, now it's like a car company's building a collector car just for the sake, like you said, to build a collector car, but, or an enthusiast car back in the day. 
everything was an enthusiast car for the most part. Yeah, it was the cool just, stuff at least. Yeah, manual steering, no airbags, road feel like hello. Well, it's like you drive like a you know uh, first generation Boxster Spider with the hydraulic steering, and then you get in a box, a newer Boxster Spider, or even just a Boxster. You know, like a like a 981 Gen. Mm. I think in the 981 Gen they went, or a, a 718 Gen, whatever it is, when they went to the electronically controlled steering. Mm -hmm. There is a difference, and maybe the the average consumer wouldn't notice, but if you're an enthusiast, you notice a difference between the hydraulic steering yeah. and the electrification steering. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the biggest difference between the 1M and the M2. That's why everyone, a lot of people who had a 1M bought an M2, and they always say the 1M. Yeah, yeah. The steering. Yeah. That's the biggest yeah. mm -hmm. difference that you oh. have a feel for is that steering. I'm going to have a 1M. I will have a 1M. Yeah. I don't care what I have You've to You've been pay. talking about the 1M for years. I know. Oh, it's such a great car. I and know. you see them too, which is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a guy on the uh, uh, Mass BMW page who has a 1M, and he saw one street park, so he pulled up and took pictures of it, and everyone's like, oh my God, Dude, that's like the rarest photo I've ever seen. It's like, <laughs> I mean, there are 5,000 of them. Yeah, it's like yeah. there are. Yeah. They're around. We've but had one at Cars and Coffee before. Yeah, Not, I love them. I don't think we've had two, but I think we've had no. one in six We years. have had two orange uh, AMG GT Black Series. Though. That's true. That Early was, on. That was pretty cool. They, yeah. Very cool. That was our first one of the season, too. It was. That was funny. We were supposed to have a third. It didn't show up, actually. I swear to God. Well, the third one was supposed to be black. Yeah, it didn't show up. I know. I almost lost a hundred bucks because I was like, there's no way another one's, I bet somebody. They're like, there's going to be a third one. I'm like, I'll bet you a hundred dollars if a third one shows up and it didn't. Oh, so, nice. Did you win the hundred dollars? He didn't give me a hundred. Oh, well, so. he's banned. I'm honorable, so I would have given the hundred up. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so speaking of the collector car market, you and I, A and B. No so, S. I'm sorry, S. Holding we, down the Ford over S here. S for staying at home. S for staying at home. <laughs> that was good. All right. <laughs> Frick. We are going to I'm gonna have a lot. I'm going to have a huge dose of you next week. Pebble Beach Car Week, which like will Christmas. be a lot of fun. I'm going for the third time. Yeah, I'm you've like never so been, fun. which is it's absurd. I'm going to just be I've grabbing never... Antonio by the wrist, like, come on, we're going to Carbale. Yeah. Antonio's going to be like guys. a kid getting his N64 on Christmas Day. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was too. That's, that's, how, that's too old. That's for me. what I was explaining to Antonio. He's like, So, what's it like? We were talking the other day, and it's like, Dude, we bust our ass out there. We're working really hard. We got three cars in the field. We, we, you know, we're sponsored with Bonhams. We, you know, we're at the Quail. We're doing this, we're doing that. It's flat out the whole time, early mornings, late nights, but it's like Christmas every day. It's, but it'll it be is cool. unbelievable. It'll be cool because I'm going to be out there with a camera, so we'll be able to document that, and that'll actually be our, our yeah. next episode. I'm looking forward to that conversation. Yeah, it'll be fun. No, so it's, it's exciting, and it's cool because, you know, you've got so many different events, and so many people come in for it. it feels like a natural environment. And once you're there for a day or two, you get really comfortable and start to understand where the good stuff is and yeah. you just tap into it. It's I'm great. I'm ready to see like a 250 GTO like street parked or something you'll, crazy. You'll see something you'll like see, that. Yeah. Like that F1 the, LM that was there a couple years yeah. ago, the white one that everyone was I was on the, the, the New York, that guy, that, the New York plate one. He sold it. Did he? I don't think yeah. we'll see it out there this year, but I was on, the, on FaceTime with my friend Dylan, just walking around car spotting. I'm looking at this freaking Diablo GTR with plates on it. He like strapped reflectors on to make it road legal. I'm looking at this thing. All of a sudden, an F1 just comes in. I'm on FaceTime. It's like, bro, you won't believe this. I'm like one. turning the phone around. Yeah. I can't even think to hit the button. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, the, year, have... the year I went was when the P1, uh, um, the big three came out. I like you just saw like P1, 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 P1. It was wow. just like the holy. Trinity. What's happening? It's it's that crazy. Yeah. And it's like you I'm, I'm ready you can for set it. your expectations as high as you want. It exceeds them. Yeah. Every waking moment, you just turn your head. It's like, oh, I just missed. You know. Yeah. Whatever. So I'm excited. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited about it. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. A, uh, B are going. S for stay tuned to the next episode. Stay, stay tuned, tuned baby. for the next one. I'm not going to high five because you'll reject me. So, nope. So I hope you enjoyed this. Ep nope. I hope. No, no. So I hope you enjoyed this episode just as much as we enjoyed uh, getting rejected from high fives over here. Uh, as always, remember to comment, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Um, if you're uh, listening to us, we're on um, Spotify and Apple Music. Um, we'll put the link in the bio. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll Welcome catch back, you in the next Sean. one. We Have you a good so trip, much. boys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>